Vault Hunter. You've come in search of the secret lost vault of Pandora. You ready to kick some ass? Okay, let's go. Hey, hey, hey. Catch. Hello, everyone. I am Mark Ellis, and this is the big ticket interview with Borderlands. We're here at San Diego Comic-Con, and I have two couches full of A-listers, and I'm just thrilled to be in the middle of it. Let's do a quick show of hands. How many of y'all actually played the Borderlands games before signing on to the movie? I see Florian. I see Eli thinking about it. You were the first hand up, Jamie. I'm, I'm the mother of a gamer. Of course I've played Borderlands. <laughs> I've played every game. Uh, we were talking about, you know, I'm I'm that girl, I'm that woman. Yeah. So were you aware of your character before you actually were no. approached for the role? No, no, no. I was not deep into the canon <laughs> of the of the game and the story and the history and the and the beautiful story of it. No, but I was aware. You asked if we had played and if I was aware of it. I was. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple experts here on the couch. Then, uh, Kevin, let me start with you. Then, what drew you to this script? Was it was it a, a, something based on a video game, which you had a little bit of familiarity with, or was it just like I want to be an action star because you really pull it off in this film? Uh, Eli, I'll, I'll give Eli the credit where credit is due. A, a conversation, uh, of course, was brought to my attention about hey. There's interest, Kevin, in you for Borderlands. Um, you know, they're interested in you for the role of Roland. Eli, the director, he's like deep in it. He wants to talk to you. And Eli gave me his <clears> pitch <throat> and his reason for it. And I was sold on the pitch. And after the pitch and after reading the script, that's when I went and then played the game. But I didn't go deep into the game. <laughs> and honestly, that's how you know where I'm at in my career. There was a time where I would have lied when you would ask that question. Like, <laughs> Who played the game because of like where I was? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, like yeah. I'm in a very honest place in my career yeah. where it's like I can tell the truth. I didn't, I did play the game, but after the role was offered, <laughs> and, and then I said, All right, well, let me go see what it's about, and then that's when I saw, okay, why Roland? It was a complete, uh, it was a completely different, like, visual aspect of. Roland being Kevin Hart than what people would probably expect. And then him saying, I want you to be this vicious person because nobody would expect it. You to come in as a combat weapons expert, et cetera. And that's when it got like really intriguing because action, of course, was something that I wanted to dabble more into. Yeah. And this gave me the opportunity. And watching the movie, you're built for the part. And so, I mean, you're, you're casting this and you're looking at this as a potential film for you. What drew you to this material, Eli? Well, I love science fiction movies. I love big, fun sci-fi. You know, I loved Escape from New York, Fifth Element, you know, Road Warrior. There, there were so many films that, that were, were part of this and have always wanted to world build. Um, and then I was familiar with the games. I was terrible at them, but I knew them. I'm not a, I'm not a very good gamer, not a strong gamer. <laughs> um, but I was really excited to world build. And, you know, the first person I went to was Kate Blanchett. We had just done... House of the Clock and its Walls together, and to my amazement and surprise and delight, she said yes. <laughs> so once you have Kate, uh, you know, everybody wants to be in the scenes with Kate, and I really wanted to put together an amazing cast. Look, Kate, you know, you're used to seeing her, obviously, in Oscar-winning roles, but we've never seen her with her flamethrower. We've never seen her be the man with no name. We've never seen her be Snake Plissken, be like a total badass bounty hunter. And that's what's cool, is taking everyone that you know, like Kevin, we know from comedies. And I remember talking about that sort of transition, I think it was... Talk about Will Smith going from Fresh Prince into Bad Boys or Eddie Murphy going 48 Hours into Beverly Hills Cop. I was like, well, the only way we're going to you know, shut people up is by having you do just nonstop. I want to throw like 200 people at you and just have you kill them and take them out <laughs> one by one. And he trained and he trained the same as Kate trained with her guns, the same as Florian trained. And, you know, Jamie Lee, obviously an icon, I've always wanted to work didn't with. Train. Didn't train. Didn't train, but you know, she went so I into the character. I trained my per look of perplexed the <laughs> questioning. Like, and, then, and then Edgar The entire I, movie, I walk around going like this. Yeah, but you're fantastic, and she's, like, razor sharp and so fun. And Edgar and I have been looking for a movie to do together, and, I, and he's such a sweet guy. I was like, oh, I want to see you be incredibly evil. So that's the fun is getting, the, the, like, the world's... It's like you I love a cast where you go, wait, what? And then you watch them together and go, um, yeah, this makes perfect yeah, sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm such an Edgar fan anyway, and then, but you say he's such a sweet guy, and then you get to play this, like, villainous presence, so... The yeah. most villainous. It, it's more fun playing the bad guy, right? Yeah, and especially in a movie like this, because I think that what, what sets him apart is the sense of humor. I mean, the movie, the tone that, that has everything to do with, with Eli is so whimsical and outrageous and almost like gonzo. It's almost like a hangover. You know, it's like you wake up in the morning after a big hangover. I, I, I always felt the, 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 the tone of the film that way. And, um, and, and it was fantastic to play this most powerful 
most evil man in the universe in a, in a movie like this. Like to have the space just to go places and to make it big and, 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 and larger than life, that was, that was pretty neat. As a regular attendee to Comic-Con, I know a little bit about having a hangover. Um, <laughs> Florian, I, this is embarrassing to admit on camera, I rewatched Creed 2 an embarrassing amount of times. Oh yeah? And I actually recognized you in the movie because you come on screen, I lean over to my friend I was watching the screening with and I said, I, I recognize that torso. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I just, that just came out of my mouth. And I was like, oh my God, that's actually Florian. That and torso it, is unique. It, but you're, you're <laughs> Quite a torso. At, there's so much physicality you're doing in this movie. So like how much of it is on the page and how much of it is just you kind of interpreting the character because you, you're imposing, you get laughs, like you run the gambit in this film. Well, I, I kept saying this um, only because you were wearing the mask, I couldn't feel safe or I couldn't feel sure. Um, that nobody sees what, go, what what is going behind what is going on behind the mask. So I had to make sure that I keep my acting up, even the mask is on. And then, of course, when it comes to the physicality, I think you know I got that down. Um, <laughs> but I kept saying that over and over again. This was probably the hardest preparation that I had, just because I'm shirtless 24/7. <laughs> you know, movies like Creed or like like Shang Chi, I had the opportunity to put some clothes on at some point. <laughs> And then, you know, I had like pizza or something and that this, in, in this project, I just couldn't do it. You know, I had to keep it strict and uh, But I want to I wanna tell people, ever. they don't know this. Okay. This man would train for three hours every morning, mm. then come to work, train all day at yeah. work, and then go back and do more training and eat four ounces of protein a day. Yeah, like, you yeah. showed me how big the piece of protein that you were able to yeah. eat. So, my joke with him is the word pizza. <laughs> Anytime I see a picture of him without a shirt on, I just write pizza. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because he, he really, he was so dedicated but to Krieg. It's, it's what's great is Kevin had the same dedication. Yeah. And I, mean, I was going to say, did all, Kevin get in the gym with oh, we were all in the gym. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we were Every in the same night. gym. Every night. Yeah. Schedule, schedule yeah. sometimes yep. passed, but we were, we I were mean, the, in the same I mean, people period. really dedicated themselves but, to this work because the game has such a fan base that you must make it what they're expecting. You could not be a slouch. And when you're working with actors at this level, they're always so ready. I remember we were shooting a scene, you'll see it, it's, it's in Caustic Caverns, in, uh, where there's just endless, there's just bandits coming out of every corner and they just gotta turn and fight and fight and fight. And I could set up a camera here and set up a camera. And I remember at a certain point, these two were so in it we didn't even, like, we got the scene, but I was like, just keep going. And we left yeah. them with a camera yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and just in a stunt team. I'm in the other hallway, you know, with Kate and Ariana <coughs> doing back-to-back -back twirling, shooting bandits. You're in the fixing in the elevator with Claptrap. But these two, I, they yeah. were so in shape that you could literally send them with a camera, just go over there, and I turn around, and they're flipping people over and back. I mean, these guys are, and, they're, and it's so professional and real. And that's when you feel like, yeah, he's a real soldier. You know, he's a real berserker. Like, they're, they, it's amazing watching them, what they do in the film. They, I just want no to add, you know, at some point when you shoot a movie, you kind of guess out, you kind of get more tired, and then you kind of start thinking, maybe, you know, I'm taking this day off from the gym. You know, I've done so much. And then you have a guy like Kevin there, yeah. who's yeah. going to right. the Every fucking day. gym. Yeah. It's 5 a.m. in the morning. And I thought to myself, if he's in the gym at 5 a.m., I yeah. just well, cannot have to yeah. You were 24 hours. He had the gym for 24 hours because he'd go on his Instagram the next day and it's 2, 3 in the morning. You're like, you know, just <laughs> going crazy. It was you, like, all... I like what I, what I will say, too, and just giving Flo his credit. You know, on page, there, there's not a dialogue. There's not a lot of dialogue to create. So what he was able to do is kind of make, like, a crazy mountain out of what was there by being present in scenes with awareness, physicality, um, and the character of Creed progressively became more and more as we went on. Like, whether it was the throwing of looks or the nods or the association with, and, you know, we started to build a relationship between the Roland and Creed, the Lilith and Creed, of course, the uh, <clears throat> Tina and Creed, that was one that was a, like, That's understood. Nice. Yeah, Ariana was incredible. You get it, mm -hmm. in their relationship. But as we, you know, got on and on with the movie, everybody started to build a nice dynamic with them. And I think, to your point earlier, when you're, like, acting, even though, like, the mask is on, staying present, staying aware, yeah. did a phenomenal job of never getting lagged or, you know, basically, like, uh, content with just being there but not being there. You were always very much aware and in it. 
And I think the the little isms that you added just became the bigger parts to Creed. You feel movie. everyone's commitment in, in, yeah. in this movie. And, and it's even when, when in the scenes with Claptrap and watch y'all interact with Claptrap. Oh, yeah, yeah. How was that on set, like to interact and how was it to direct scenes <laughs> with Claptrap coming in and out? I, I mean, Look. I'm not gonna cuss there times where I was like, <laughs> This clap trap. Like, where, where is he? So we, we what, have, where is he at, Eli? He's coming around. He's and so, he's gonna come and then he stands. So when you guys are walking, clap trap. He's gonna be where, Eli? Show me where, Kevin. You're not looking at clap trap. He's on the right, Eli. <laughs> There's no gym that well, can teach you. Well, it was a full you. CGI character. So we had what was the stuffy, so you could get like a stuffed clap trap for the eye line. But then in the scene. I'd be like, well, I'll just act it out. And Jack Black recorded all the lines, so I'd play them, they'd hear it, and I'd be like, no, oh, hey, everybody. And Kevin's like, no, no, I got it. I'd be like, hi, Roland, I'm Claptrap. And you're like, no, 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 I, I don't need you there, because now I'm thinking about you. And I would just do it, and the more it would annoy him, it actually worked for the scene. But Kevin would be like, don't, don't, don't. And they're like, where's Claptrap? He'd be like, Eli, do not, do not. I'm like, why? What's wrong? I'm just being yes, Claptrap. You have an actor who's a director. It's terrible. It's not good. Because <laughs> he really wants to be in the movie. I mean, let's just be honest. He actually would like to be all of us. So the fact that Jack wasn't there and that he can get in the position, just yeah, get in the position. Like, yeah, let's see your like, clap trap. Be like this. Hey, everybody, I'm clap trap. <laughs> That's... We're doing a scene. And they're like, no, it's Kevin's like, no, Eli, Sorry, I got no, it. I got it. I, I got it. I don't, I don't need the visual. Yeah, I I... No, <laughs> why? What's wrong? Hey, everybody. There's got to be a ah, hidden blooper run. reel for this movie. Oh, it's just terrible. you doing no, clap there's trap. There's an entire movie you could cut of me squatting around. I guarantee you, if you cut together. The footage uh, of Eli as Claptrap. It's a, like a sequel. Well, there, I mean, disturbing. there's sure. one scene that, a was, movie. that was, it was getting laughs and it was getting a lot of like excitement in the theater, and that's the chase scene where it's 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 Kevin and Florian and, and Claptrap's involved, but there's also they go through a situation oh, where there's yeah. a lot of liquid yeah. that gets oh, yeah, sprayed yeah. on oh, them. Yeah. What was that like to film? What was that like to feel? You know, the funny thing about dealing with water, <laughs> especially if water has to come at you, like. You know, it has nothing to do with acting. It's all about like, you know what's coming and you, and you try not to do like the <laughs> before it comes because you're like, the cameras are on. So in this scene, I, I, I buried a lot of takes because they're like, all right, so once you go through, guys, we're going to splash in three. So it's like, I know it's coming. I'm trying to do a dialogue. Hey, and I took, <laughs> Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, no, you clearly see you break. No, I got it. No, I got it. That's, I got it on this one. So Kate. Kate and and uh, Ariana and Flo were all in there, and, and they were doing it right. But I know that there was moments. You can't, Kevin looks at me. He's, Kevin's like, "Hey, look, man, don't get me wet. Yeah. Do not spray me, or I'm leaving the set. Don't." I'm like, "No, we gotta. It'll be fine." He's like, "That's fine. You just don't, don't, don't get on my face." And then, so you don't just gotta to give him my face, though, right? Just, you just, not, just get on my shoulder. A little, little bit of there, I'll act the rest and CGI. <laughs> but yeah, but Ariana, you can see her in. And, and by the way, talk about a fearless performance, Ariana Greenblatt. Unbelievable. I mean, there yes. she is with Kate, with Jamie. She learns the front walk over. She's like, I want to walk up a wall and shoot a bunch of bandits. So Florian picks her up with one hand and like just pulls her over the ceiling while she's, you know, firing guns. She's yeah. incredible so and fearless. Guns. The only scene she was afraid of, she's like, I don't want to get this stuff on my face. <laughs> and then we just whoosh, whoosh and she goes, ah, it's in my mouth. And that's in the film. That was just improvised. It's, it, it's such a fun movie to watch. It's a great ride. And I mean, I'm watching this through my 10-year-old eyes thinking if I had my birthday coming up, I'd want every toy that I'm seeing at. Oh, oh Claptrap, Trap, you made it, bud. Hey, I think he heard us heart. talking about him. He got pissed at Eli. Yeah, I don't have any yeah. questions for you, bud. I'm sorry I didn't prepare for the... That's on me. That's not on you. You did nothing wrong, but um, we'll hopefully see you for the sequel, right? Bye. I can answer right. some if you'd like no, me to. No, oh, that's no, quite no, all I can right. The movie Wait, where are we going? Borderlands, it opens you. nationwide August 9th. Get your tickets at Fandango. For the big ticket, I'm Mark Ellis. We'll see you next time. Hey, Blanchett. <laughs> no, we see we miss you. you. We love, love you, Kate. Kate. We love, love you, Ariana. Ariana, Gina. Borderlands, August 9th. Let's go.